Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Boley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, April 27th, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Currently, we have futures uh, that are pointing up. Uh, right now, Dow Jones futures up 135 points, S&P 500 futures up 2150, NASDAQ futures up 115. So on a relative basis, we are seeing some strength <clears throat> in those NASDAQ futures. Uh, crude oil prices, uh, they are up 31 cents, back to uh, 74.60 per barrel, but it's been a steady decline in uh, crude oil of late, and that has been uh, taking a toll on the energy group, which we'll look at in just a minute. Uh, Ten-year Treasury yield up three basis points this morning, back to 3.46%. Still kind of in that range, uh, I would say kind of in the middle of a range that goes down to about 3.29, 3.30% to the downside, and then back up uh, perhaps into the mid-360s on the upside. We're sitting squarely in the middle right at about 3.46, so nothing going on there. Uh, as far as the show goes, let me run through the agenda with you today. So we're going to start off with the uh, daily market recap, uh, then talking technically. Chart of the day, I'll show you a sentiment chart there. Earnings spotlight, going to spend some time in earnings uh, spotlight because there have been so many reports coming out. Uh, we'll try and roll through as many of those as we can this morning, give you an update there, and then we'll wrap up with three Dow stocks in the three you must see. All right, let's move on and let's take a look at what happened on uh, uh, Wednesday. So we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average finish down 229 points. The S&P 500 finished down uh, 15 and a half, and the NASDAQ was up 55 points. The good news was Microsoft came out and blew away estimates. And that was actually a report that I saw coming. I mean, I just looked at the way Microsoft was setting up on a relative basis. It looked like it was very strong. Um, it was in a strong group. Software has been one of the best groups in uh, 2023 so far, year to date. And so you had one of the best stocks in one of the very best industry groups. And there's a reason for it usually. And we found out yesterday what it was, blowout earnings. Uh, Microsoft had a great quarter. And we'll see whether or not that can continue. But there were some issues. I mean, we had a chance to get back up through the 20-day moving average. After the Microsoft news, we did gap up on the NASDAQ, got very close to the 20-day moving average, uh, literally almost touching uh, Tuesday's intraday high. So we went right up near Tuesday's intraday high, right up, uh, and maybe even through the 20-day EMA. We'll look at that in just a minute. Um, but are actually uh, both the 20 day and the 20 hour looking at both uh, on the NASDAQ. Again, we'll look at that in just a couple minutes, but we failed. And that was the big takeaway yesterday. I know it's only two days, but these last two days have not been good for the market. Um, you know, we've had months, several months of the appearance of accumulation. So I'm not overly concerned about two days down, but we need to continue to watch this because if this type of pattern continues and the volatility index continues to rise. And I would watch the 20 level on the VIX. That's where we've had a lot of failures probably over the last three to four weeks. We get up there and we don't get through and then we drop back down. That's not, that's the hallmark of a bull market. That's what you want to see. You don't want to see the VIX starting to rise. If that VIX breaks out above 20 and we start to see that begin to, to move higher, that can lead to more, um, uh, impulsive type selling, where you see big drops in short periods of time. So it's something I'm watching. I'm not overly concerned yet. We haven't lost any major support levels, in my opinion. But the rising 20-day moving average is one trend-following moving average that I like to watch. And we are back down below that. So that's going to be step one for me, is we need to see the major indices, especially that NASDAQ, move back up through the 20-day. Mid caps down almost 1%, same with small caps. Both of them, especially small caps, getting close to the low that we saw in March, which you can look back here over the last six months, and that is the lowest low. So small caps continue uh, to really struggle here. I do have a chart I'll show you on the IWM, the Russell 2000 ETF, in uh, just a few minutes as well. Moving on to the sectors, technology, of course, had a big day. Why wouldn't it? Microsoft, um, was it 20, almost 23% of the entire ETF? And it 
absolutely exploded to the upside, breaking above resistance, gapped above resistance, stayed above it. And so that was a big, big factor in technology. But even technology struggled. As you can see, we got back up to 146.11, but the 20 days at 147.01. So even with that great report from Microsoft and all of that weight that Microsoft carries in the XLK, still couldn't get back up above the 20 day. I'm not trying to be bearish, but at the same time, trying to be realistic. And so I remain very bullish going forward, but I'm also noting these short-term breakdowns and failures. And I, I'm looking to today and into the end of the month to see that kind of taken out, those key resistance levels to the upside taken out, and we'll see. Um, technology was the only sector that was positive yesterday. I, I do want to mention consumer discretionary, consumer discretionary, even though it was negative, uh, was the second best performing group yesterday. So the selling, I mean, look at the list of, of groups that were, where we saw all the selling yesterday, utilities, industrials, healthcare, and energy. That right there screams defense and value. Defensive-oriented stocks, value-oriented stocks. That's what was taking the market down yesterday. So while we need to be realistic about what's happening on the major indices, also need to be realistic about what was taking the market down yesterday, which was not the aggressive growth areas. You might consider, and I mean, I consider industrials one of the five aggressive groups, but I, I look at industrials and financials as more, they're aggressive, but at the same time, they're, they've got a lot of value. Um, normally when the market is value oriented, you see industrials do well. Um, that was not the case yesterday. So anyway, for what it's worth, Yes, we saw some breakdowns, short-term breakdowns on the major indices, but at the same time, yesterday's action was being led by defensive groups to the downside value. And that makes me question that move a little bit. So if you think things are a little confusing here in the short term, well, I think they are. Um, maybe we'll get some clarity here over the next couple of days. And it could be in either direction, but clarity would be nice. 10-year treasury yield. Um, first of all, we do have a few economic reports coming out today. Q1 GDP, we're getting the initial estimate out this morning at 8.30. Actually, by the time you get this, uh, uh, by the time you review this uh, video, you should have the Q1 GDP out. The estimate is for 2%. Now, it's notable, first, because it was positive, um, but it's also slowing from Q4 GDP. That final Q4 GDP came in at 2.6%. So we are seeing, you know, if the GDP does come in around that 2% level, we are seeing, you know, a move back down in terms of economic strength, GDP, and so forth. Um, will it be enough to encourage the Fed to hit the brakes on the rate hikes? We're going to find out. I don't know. Um, I would hope that it is, but the Fed has said they're going to remain vigilant against inflation. And will they rate hike again or hike rates one more time? <clears throat> we're going to find out. I don't think they should, but I've been saying that for the last couple of meetings. I didn't think they should, and they keep doing it. So we'll see what happens. Obviously, they're not uh, consulting me before they come up with their decisions, which is probably a good thing. All right, um, let's keep moving on. S&P 500. So here was that. Here, look at those two big red candles, filled red candles. If you look back, I haven't seen any big, you know, consecutive red candles since back in the early part of March. And you can see the volume picked up and it wasn't the end of the world, but we did see selling accelerate. And so that is what I'm watching for here. I don't believe we're going back down to the October low, but it's possible that we do go through more consolidation. I mean, that's what led us down last time was seeing this selling, you know, breaking key support levels. Um, you know, and then trying to find a bottom. When we talk a little bit about the sentiment indicator in a few minutes, uh, maybe I'll bring, you know, some of that into clarity. But right now we are downtrending. I don't think there's any doubt about that in the short term. And we've lost that key 20-day moving average. Looking at the NASDAQ 100, pretty much same thing. Uh, we had the double top. 
right here. That was that black candle that printed last Tuesday. I told members in the daily market report on Tuesday that we had gapped up above the highest candle body and it was do or die for the NASDAQ at that point in the short term. It was, and that's because it was option expiration week. We had a ton of in the money call options. So the last thing you want to see if you're bullish in the short term is a failure at resistance and a reversing candle. And off of that, what have we done? We've had pretty steady selling, although much of it was gap downs until the last two days. To me, this movement the last two days has been much more bearish than these candles up here where we went back to the 20 day. That's why I want to get back up above the 20 day moving average. Um, now, the 20 day moving average right here is 12,901. Let me show you on the hourly chart. The hourly is 12,870. So let's go back and look at it again. Daily, 12,901. Hourly, 12,870. They're right there together in a 30 point range. So when I look at this hourly chart, I'm looking at a couple things. And I'm a big fan of the NASDAQ. That's the one I tend to watch because it's a more aggressive index. It's more risk on. Um, and so this is the one that I really pay the most attention to, even though I always use the S&P as a benchmark um, because I do think it is the benchmark. I, I view the NASDAQ against the S&P 500 for that very reason. You know, I want to see how it's doing relative to the benchmark. But here, I think you can see pretty clearly that that trend line intersects all of the key highs since the top that we saw last Tuesday. So where do we need to get to get through that trend line? Well, it looks like about 12,925. Where was the recent high? 12,925. Where's the 20 hour? 12,870. Where's the 20 day? 12,901. From 12,870 to 12,925, that area, We've got four key resistance points that I like to follow. That is big overhead. Now, we've got the NASDAQ set to open probably up close to this area, maybe not quite up to the top. But my question going into today, the big question I want answered is, okay, we're going to gap up just like we did yesterday. And we made an early run yesterday. But what happened in the afternoon? We sold off. Today? question is no different. When we gap up, do we have anything to follow through? If we follow through and go back through this trend line, clear the 20 hour, the 20 day, this recent price resistance, establish a higher high and potentially a higher low, then we're starting to turn the table back to the upside. But if we gap up today and we fail at these levels or even intraday pierce it and can't hold it, and reverse back down and sell off in the afternoon again, that to me would be a completely different story. So at Earnings Beats last week, I was telling members, get out of leverage. When we had that reversal, I said, you don't want to be holding leverage at this point. Not with the market maker incentive to bring prices lower into options expiration. And as I always talk about with options expiration, people can... Um, <clears throat> They can execute their options. They can, you know, if you've got a call option, you can exercise it and, be, you know, become a, turn it into a long position, which leaves the market maker still on the other side of the trade. So just because options expire Friday doesn't mean that market maker, their financial incentive changes. A lot of folks will exercise and buy the stock. One reason to do that is you don't have tax consequences. That additional basis just goes right into the stock you exercise into. So there are a lot of traders that will do that, that will avoid the um, taxes by exercising options and buying the underlying security. So that's why I think this trend line and all of these areas I just talked about are really important. I'm talking about in the near term, folks. I'm not talking about, you know, if we fail, that means we're going back down to new lows. And that doesn't mean that if we break out, we're going to immediately go back to those August highs. I'm talking about short term. Right now, I think it's clear we are in a downtrend. What do you do to break the downtrend? Break the trend line. That's the first thing. 
and take out all these other key resistance levels in the process. I mean, if you get through, you've still got other issues. You've still got the 50 hour right above. I mean, we're going to have the 50 day or well, no, 20 is actually above the 50 day. Um, but let me get out of here. You're going to have prior resistance, that 320 level in the QQQ, 321. That's going to be uh, rather important. But on the NDX, it's going to be these tops up here around 13200. So just because you reverse the trend doesn't mean it's just straight to the moon. And if you don't and reverse back to the downside, doesn't mean we're going back down here. Could just be that we go back to this 12.5 area where we recently bottomed, got the 50-day coming in at 12.588. I mean, that would probably be the next level that I would look to. But if you fail and you start to turn back down, especially if you break below the 50 in this area of support, it starts getting a little dicier to hold on to um, leverage positions. Because after saying get out of leverage there, I think on the QQQ, this 311, 312 area is pretty important. And we did go back down just below it yesterday, but we went back up above it yesterday. So it looks like right now that area is holding and I'm bullish overall. So I always say, if you're going to get into leverage, personally, I like to do it where I think we could reverse. Meta had a big report this morning. We'll look at that chart in, in a minute if we have some time. Um, but this is going to be a really important day because yesterday you got a great report from Microsoft. Today, another blowout last night, actually, from Meta Platforms or formerly Facebook. And those are two big components in the market. If they come out with great earnings and the market gaps up and then shrugs it off and we sell off, that's not a good look. It's telling me that maybe this big run needs more time, needs more of a pause. And so, again, I think today's action is going to be kind of important. Um, the other thing, if we do break back up above the key resistance, remember, we're getting into the end of April, beginning of May. Historically, the 26th of the month through the 6th of the month, the following month, is when 80, more than 80% of the gains have been made on the S&P 500 since 1950. That we're entering the most bullish period in a calendar month. So, you know, today is, what is today? Today is the 27th. Yeah. So yesterday was the 26th. So we're just getting into a bullish period. So if Meta comes through, we get the gap up, which it looks like we will, do we follow through? If we do, this could start a big move to the upside, potentially. Got to break that short-term resistance first, though. All right, I mentioned IWM, small caps. So I wanted to just show you, I still think we're in a bottoming structure here. Recently, I was getting very bullish about the uh, small caps because if you look at these other bottoming structures, you make a bottom, you go back up, you set a, a key high, and then you're in you're range bound. And when you break out, you generally have a good move. That one was didn't last very long. But look at this one. Big move down. There's your reaction high. Sideways action. Break out. Boom. Explosion to the upside. How about here? Set a low. Set a high. We did come back down. Put a double bottom on this one. Double top on this one. Pull back. And then boom. Back up we go. Come over here. This is a little short term sideways. But. Reaction high, double bottom, double top, pullback, boom. Look at what we're in. Now, this one's going, it's getting more extended. But here was the move down, reaction high, pullback, not quite a double bottom. This is where we had a gap up above this. And this is where I thought, hey, if we could trigger this breakout, this is what we would possibly be looking at. Well, we had a bearish um, dark uh, cloud cover type candle. And then that's led to more selling. So that was a false breakout. But we haven't lost this support level. Maybe we're just going down for a double bottom. Maybe we won't. Maybe we won't get all the way back down there. Maybe it'll be like this. And then break back to the upside. This is the key level, though, for small caps, for the IWM. We need to get back through this 180 level. Um, all right, let's take a look. Um, I want to pull up maybe one more chart here. Let's look at the, the uh, restaurant group. Chipotle made a big, big move yesterday. I'll show you their chart here in just a couple minutes. But this was a really nice uptrend that we've been in and then just continued to accelerate. 
Look at its AD line. Look at its relative strength versus the S&P 500. This is one chart. I look at the restaurants and folks say we're heading for a recession. And I'm like, hmm, okay. Well, I would think I'd want to be selling restaurants into a recession, but uh, apparently that's not happening. So something's not quite right. That's why I think the recession may be a little bit overblown. But imagine that, the media overblowing something. I can't imagine. Um, all right, so let's move on next to the chart of the day. I want to take you into this uh, equity-only put call ratio. What I did up at the top here is I have the S&P 500. Down here at the bottom is the five-day moving average of the equity-only put call ratio. What I would suggest that you do is ignore uh, a lot of what was going on in November. You can see, first of all, that we're getting, we're starting to get more and more bearish in the options world when the market was going up. And there's a reason for it. I don't have time to get into it today. I actually have adjusted a lot of that out of a user-defined index that I'm tracking. But for purpose of this discussion, what I would do, let's just ignore November and December um, because I do think that there was some crazy stuff going on there. Um, but if you look at this S&P 500, and you look at the major bottoms that we've gone in, you know, we've had right here, five-day moving average of the equity-only put call ratio got up to 0.85. Beautiful marking of that bottom. If you go back before November, look at the bottoms uh, here. This one was almost perfect here, was 0.85, five-day moving average right there. Went down with a double bottom. We got up to 0.80 there. Um, this bottom here, short-term bottom right there, 0.80. Five-day moving average. How about this bottom right here? This was at 0.82. So the reason I'm mentioning this is that with the selling we've seen the last couple of days, this five-day moving average is moving up. The last two days have been up around that 80 level or above. So if the selling does, let's say this, this rally this morning fails and we do move back down, watch the equity-only put call ratio. Because if we get another couple of days of selling, and we get this moving back up to 80, 85. I just want to point out that is what typically marks bottoms. And that's why I'm saying short term, we could be in a little bit of trouble. But as things continue to escalate, if they escalate to the downside, we're going to see the put call ratio get up to levels that many times will mark major um, uh, bottoms in the market, very significant bottoms. So keep all that in mind as you... Uh, Kind of check out the action over the next few days. All right, let's move into the uh, earnings spotlight. I got a number of charts here for you. First, I want to just go over some charts from yesterday. Um, because these are companies that reported either Tuesday evening or Wednesday morning. Uh, Microsoft, there's the Microsoft chart. The big gap up. Didn't really have a lot of follow through. But that heavy volume and the breakout above key resistance was bullish. In my opinion, for Microsoft, I think we're going to end up going higher there. There's the Chipotle chart I mentioned. AD line just taking off. The breakout we saw above, you know, these tops that are on 1750 prior to earnings. Relative strength, if you look at the stock, we had bottomed back in the beginning of 2023. We've been moving higher. Now we know why. And look at after earnings, look at that relative strength pop. So it looks pretty good there. How about Google? Um, Google. AD line looked good. I didn't really like relative strength going in on this one. I was a little, uh, not really um, overly intrigued with Google going into earnings. I didn't expect a big report. I didn't really expect a big reaction. We got a little bit of a gap up, and then we pulled back and finished pretty close to flat. And looking at their relative strength, that's about what I would have assumed. Um, we did have these tops right up here at about 107.5, 108, 109. Um, we do have those. We're going to have to try to negotiate those. One last one, end phase from yesterday. Big gap down. Look at the relative strength going into earnings. Horrible. That's when you have problems a lot of times with these uh, types of stocks. All right. Um, I am going to take a look at just a couple of stocks that reported last night and um, give you my take on those. So uh, double check, see where we are this morning. Meta right now, 235. So up 12%, it is going to easily break out above its recent high. The question is, what does it do after the open? Does it fail to follow through? Does it sell off? What happens? I think that's going to be key. ServiceNow reported, they're down three. Uh, no big deal there. O'Reilly, 
Auto, uh, I'm not seeing any change yet on that one. KLA um, Corp, that is in the semiconductor space. That is big because semiconductors have been struggling. This might be something to get semiconductors going. However, note that the gap up is going to take us right to the 20-day EMA. Again, do we follow through? That's a theme. It's a big theme for today. All right, I want to go in and take a look at uh, the three you must see. Let's wrap up. So the first thing I want to show you is Home Depot. Home Depot, reversing back to the downside, back below these moving average, could not get through this gap resistance level. I think that's critical. I wouldn't touch Home Depot until we get back through that 303, 304 level. Next up, UNH. UNH, United Health Group, big move up here, but we've come all the way back down, and now we're in this gap support area. Top of gap was right at about 485. Bottom of the gap, maybe about 473. We're in the middle of that. We failed at the 20-day moving average. Can we get through the 20, start to trend back up, or do we ultimately lose this gap uh, support zone? That's what I'm watching there. And then Intel. Um, Intel, this is going to be a really interesting report. They report after the bell tonight. They were gaining a lot of strength. I mean, look at the AD line just all of a sudden exploding before price did, and then price moved up. And now we've been seeing this selling all the way, to, you know, throughout April. Is this an opportunity? I mean, Intel showed some strength finally against the semis, and now it's starting to roll back over again. The selling coming back down is on light volume. This is one of those reports, I'm just not sure what's going to happen, to be honest. I thought that, hey, you know, things were turning around with uh, Intel breaking out. Or was that simply a way to get out uh, a lot of big money? I don't know. Anyhow, we're going to find out later tonight. Listen, let's follow or see what kind of follow through we get. That's going to be the key theme for today. Um, everybody have a great day. And I will be back tonight for my last guest hosting session of the final bar for Dave Keller, who's in New York City. Um, so uh, join me for that after the close. And let's wrap up this market. Let's see what happened today. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading.